what I'm going to be talking about is a bit of a dragon that lurks actually the foundations of all modeling of Markov processes. Let's say I just want to um, analyze a conditional distribution that takes some initial state of a system x0, maps it to some ending state, say a second later, x1, um, and I'm gonna call this uh, the space x, I'm gonna call that the visible states. Simple example, you might just observe this. For, um, it could be, say, the weather patterns that you notice, or, and this gets to be a bit more interesting, this uh, conditional distribution might be something that we human engineers actually construct, like, for example, in a digital computer. So I want to analyze the thermodynamics of that process, say, if I know the initial distribution over the states x0. So the way that I'm going to be doing this, I'm assuming I live in a Markov world. Let's say that we, for simplicity, start classical. So I've got a continuous time Markov chain. Well, we know how to do that um, in many, many cases. For example, if this is bit erasure, there's probably well over 100 papers out there now showing how to use continuous time Markov chains to find out, for example, the minimum amount of free energy that you need to implement bit erasure. And um, we can show, for example, by doing that, that if your uh, Markov chain has got to be time varying, it can't be in a homogeneous Markov chain, but you have a time varying continuous time Markov chain, you can, for example, make this entire bit erasure process be thermodynamically reversible and saturate the Landauer bound. Cool, all well and good. Now let's try that for something that's a little bit more complicated than everybody's favorite toy, bit erasure. Well, it turns out that bit erasure is actually very, very special because the ending state at the end of bit erasure has lost all information about the starting state. And there are very few processes out there that I'm actually interested in that have that property. Most of what goes on in a digital computer, in the gates and so on, the ending states actually reflect some information about the starting states. As it turns out, you cannot implement the vast majority of non-degenerate conditional distributions using a time-varying continuous, continuous time Markov chain. In particular, for example, you cannot actually implement a bit flip. You cannot even do it approximately. It doesn't matter how radically your rate matrix in your continuous time Markov chain is changing with time. Mathematically impossible. That's actually been known since the 30s, it turns out. There was a um, major article on this in 1961, the same year that Rolf Landauer actually was going after bit erasure. It's called the embeddability problem. Mathematicians have known about this. So what the blankety blankety blank? If I'm, I'm talking about a classical world, I'll mention quantum mechanics in a little bit, but a classical world, my little computer, the ones that are in this or in my pocket or what have you, how do they just do something like even flip a bit? I've got a mathematical proof here that it's actually, you can't even approximate it. Can't get close. Well, here's the answer. It turns out that if you see any non-trivial dynamics over a set of visible states, that there must, in addition, be some set of hidden states. And your actual continuous time Markov chain is doing some very degenerate kind of dynamics over the joint visible and hidden states. Loosely speaking, David was talking before, as well as other people, about support vector machines boosting up to higher dimensional spaces where everything's linear. In a certain sense, that's what's actually going on every time you even do a bit flip. We can calculate lower bounds on how big this space of hidden states Z needs to be. We do not have strict ones. It is very difficult mathematics to be able to figure these things out. So we've only got weak lower bounds, um, but nonetheless, they're non-zero. Um, now let me go back and redo all my thermodynamics where I'm looking at things that are, gee, as complicated as even bit flips, and you can do all this. But you'll notice something as you start playing around with these rate matrices, having them vary in such a way as to do this horribly complicated thing like flipping a bit. What you will notice is that there's going to be a non-zero minimal number of times during the dynamics at which your rate matrix is going to actually change discontinuously. And it turns out you can prove that that is always the case. 
that there is a lower bound for any non-degenerate process that you're doing, any non-degenerate conditional distribution, there is a lower bound on the number of discontinuous jumps of your rate matrix that's implementing this. So in other words, there's a discrete number of non-zero number of time steps. Time is digital in a purely classical world if your dynamics is anything other than trivial. And it seems that this might even extend over into quantum mechanical world if we're doing quantum thermodynamics. So you do a partial trace of a system, so you end up with the Lindblad equation, which is again a master equation. But that is work yet to be done.